everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka Nice. And we are back with another Twitter thread. Today I'm asking you about strict upgrades. Frequently Yu-Gi-Oh has iconic cards that end up in every single deck period for a couple of months. And then they print a card that is so much better than that card that it disappears entirely from the entire ecosystem. So today I'm asking you which of these you remember. And I'm gonna begin with Borolode Dragon. This card was I think like $75 for a short period of time. It was in every single extra deck, the most powerful four link you could make, and then they released Boral Sword. You don't even see this guy anymore. Now it's all access code. Let's see what you all came up with. But first, this video is sponsored by Factor. As we start the new year, I've become even more busy than usual with even more new projects than I can handle. So I don't have that much time to cook nor the energy to do so. And that's where Factor can help me out. Factor is a pre-prepared meal delivery service that makes eating well come naturally, no matter who you are. That's because their meals take only two minutes or less to get ready with no prep and no mess. So you'll be saving lots of time that you can now spend on yourself. Factor is great for people with a busy lifestyle who wanna eat well. It's no nonsense, delicious food that's ready quickly. And their chef prepared meals take the guests work out of eating well through nutritious, purposeful eating. There's even meals for those looking to follow keto, low calorie, or vegan and vegetarian lifestyles. I always cook with my wife, and Factor has really cut down on the time we waste in the kitchen. Now we get to spend that time together doing what we want instead of an hour prepping food. And if you're worried about dietary needs, Factor has you covered. Meal plans offer variety with a rotating weekly menu of 34 meal options, 36 add-ons like smoothies, keto shakes, desserts, and more, so you'll be spoiled for choice. Meal plans range from four to 18 meals per week, and you can add more or reduce based on your preference. You can also easily modify food preferences at any moment or skip a week if you're not around and don't need meals. Get 50% off your first factor box and free wellness shots for life using my link. For life? Is life is that, I don't, that's a long time. That means you can choose two free wellness shots from three available flavors with every order as long as you're an active subscriber. Click the link in the description or scan my QR code with your phone. Dyer says goodbye my majestic yellow steed. God. Nightmare Unicorn. It was so iconic to go Mascarena into Unicorn that they printed a Unicorn with Mascarena on it. Now she just goes into her girlfriend. When did Mascarena go woke? Wait, it's the, this is Ibli on Unicorn? Sorry, all white women look the same to me. Solemn Scolding, says I wish I was dead, was run for a very specific period of time. And then they just printed Solemn Strike. God, who remembers playing Solemn Scolding in Pendulum decks? Oh man, we played a lot of Wee Witch's Apprentice. Does anyone remember normal summoning tour guide to get Sangan to go into Wee Witch's Apprentice? A classic Trinity play. And then Dark the Dark Charmer Gloomy. As soon as the Charmer links came out for each individual attribute, it was over for these boys. But we played almost all of the attribute links. It was like Hippo Shinigan, Miss Starboy was everywhere, Mrs. Radiant for Zoo, Doolittle Chimera in Infernoid. Oh, Great Fly never really saw play, but. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. An extreme call here, says the Law Yu-Gi-Oh, but a really good one. With the release of SDY and SDK Lajin was the end all best monster you can play, 1800 attack on a no tribute summon. In the champion pack soon after, the mechanical chaser showed up. 50 attack difference, but boy, did it matter. Now, thankfully, you weren't likely to see this card because it was about $400 at the time. Hasher Brown has a fantastic one. Oh, secure Gardena. This used to be an incredibly playable card. You would go normal summon Alistair into the one, the only Salaman Great Almirage into secure Gardena. That's a light, so then you can easily make a copy of Makaba. As soon as Artemis was released, it became clear that one extra deck slot is fewer than two. Pot of Greed has not seen play since Cup of Ace came out. That is true, Trash Jesus. Uh, even though, of course, Pot of Greed is the more economical card, as for Cup of Ace to function as Pot of Greed, you have to pay $5 a month to Luke Vaughn karma. I wish I were Luke Von Karma. And he says just all of the MST retrains, Galaxy Cyclone, Twin Twister, Cosmic. We get a new one every two years and when one appears, every other one gets blown away. Just a big Cyclone circle jerk of cards, side deck mainstayed for one year and unplayable the next. This is actually not a bad one. Almost the entirety of the rank four toolbox. There was a time when rogue decks would just slot in rank fours, uh, but since the archetype philosophy and the creation of generic links, the nightmares have led to their extinction. It does feel like we see almost none of these cards in a world where you could just be playing a nightmare. Hank being replaced by Fenrir is very funny. Pank was one of the best going second cards in the game for so long, then they printed another Pank 
Uh, I will push back on this a little bit. I feel like Fenrir didn't replace Pank. It just ended up being an incredibly powerful card in an incredibly powerful deck. Now you can play both, and many people do. Effect Failure is a great hand trap, but Infinite Impermanence is just better in every way. It can be used on both turns as a trap card, so it can't be called by, and can negate spells and traps if your opponent forgets about zone placement. I will say there is one notable difference. Wait, no, there's not. DPE. It's, it's replacing, replacing Dragoon. Dragoon. The former de facto best normal summon for ritual decks everywhere has largely been eclipsed by Diviner, who can do exactly the same stuff as Manju, but with far more utility, even outside ritual decks. It just searches any part of a ritual, it bins Herald and searches any part of a ritual. Also, it's a six, also it can bin other stuff. Specifically a Duel Links example, says William Antonelli, battle phase hand traps. These are all staples in top tier decks at one point, but even Duel Links now has gotten so fast you're wasting deck slots on these outside of stall. Spherk into Veil into Kiteroid. God, these were all frustrating. It was so annoying having to purchase a new disgusting hand trap every couple of months. I think Spherk had the most staying power. While we're talking about Boral Sword, Boral Sword has mostly been crept by access code. Popping cards without the opponent being able to respond is just way more useful. I remember when access code was first revealed, people were like, I don't know, man. It seems like in any scenario where you can get to a link for, you're gonna be able to win because you can make Boral Sword. A wonderful answer. I can't think of a better one. The only one difference between these two cards, the word banish. Sakuretsu, a staple in old formats, completely invalidated by Dimensional Prison, which of course banishes. Everyone's saying Boral Sword, but I'd also like to give a special shout out to Utopia Double. Utopia Double, who also got power crept after access code release. Card was played for a bit as a beater OTK enabler until it just eventually fell out of favor. The difference between the this card and access code is one of them requires you to play a bad card in the main deck. I don't know, it might be a head-ass take, but it feels like DD Crow targeting one in the graveyard and banishing it has at this point been power crept by Shifter. No contest. Even when DD Crow began to see play again, that was just because called by got limited. There are scenarios in which I'd prefer a DD Crow to a dimension shifter, but most of the time the reason I'm playing DD Crow is because there is a percent chance I won't draw the dimension shifter. They're used for different cases. Yeah, that's true. For instance, some decks can't play dimension shifter. <laughs> when incantations came out, it it was essentially the best method to summon rituals for any deck. Yep, it led to that really cool deck from history, the uh, ritual toolbox strategy. However, when the Drytrons came out, th there was pretty much no reason to play them. It's so frustrating that the Drytrons are known for this very adept, powerful monster spamming deck that ends on a quadrillion negates, when they are also an unbelievably good generic ritual toolbox series of cards. Little Knight is a direct upgrade from DPE. No, no, she's not. No, she has she has fewer attack points. Um uh, uh I do appreciate that they keep trying to make this effect more powerful. Uh it says Fiendish. Wow, I get to permanently negate the monster. Breakthrough skill. Wow, I get to activate this even if I mill it. Lost world. Wow, I get to use this twice. Infinite impermanence. Okay, if it's in the opener, it's still good. Void ogre. Bit of a niche pick for a while, but I am one of the best generic eights around. And then they released this card. Void Ogre was so fun and so playable in so many decks until they were just like, now nah, we're giving you an Omni. Swolox, shouts out to early Link monsters. Gotta be one of my favorite genders. Um, I remember when Proxy Dragon went crazy. Who remembers summoning the uh, Grinder Golem tokens to the Akashic Zones? This is mostly true. To get one guy into the graveyard, a lot of decks were playing Clara and Reshka, the Valentro duo, and then that was largely replaced by Almirage afterwards. Uh, but no Notably, Clara and Rushka did a lot of stuff that Almirage don't. And the most important one of those things is it's a spellcaster. So if you were playing against a deck that set up Secret Village, you could just use this. I do remember this card caused a huge hubbub when it was first released because it allows you to use a set monster. Now, what it means there isn't you can use a face down monster to link summon this, but you can use a monster that was previously set and has since been flipped up to perform the link summon. So different decks do play these cards to different levels of success, but by and large, yes, Pot of Prosperity is just a direct improvement over Pot of Extravagance. I remember when they unbanned Exiton Knight, everyone was like, oh my god, we're gonna have to play around Exiton Knight every single game from here on out, and then like one set later, they were like, oh, you don't know the half of it, buckaroo. I feel so bad for Psychic Eraser Laser. Oh man, does anyone remember this card? It was like a TCG exclusive, right? We were like, oh my God, it's like Nibiru. 
they're giving us a card that resolves a really specific board state. Oh, fuck, this card is so tight. And then they just came out with Harold. They're like, fuck it. Chad is saying that Harold came out years earlier. What the fuck? Why did anyone ever think this card was gonna see play? People sucked this card from the back silly style. A must have during cash format that not only served as generic removal with any additional cost, but also an ebly out crazy how many cards sp is just better than man there's like a dozen of these azalea donner I, sp is just it's everything man it is everything using these two to link climb and master rule four off of scapegoat is good memories yes scapegoat and end phase link climb on your turn best way to make Boralode. it was like link spider proxy dragon link spider for Boralode. decode talker i mean decode talker was power crept by like 15 different cards but it was so funny when we had just started master rule 4 and people were like describing this as a negate they would show a board that had like two points of interaction and a decode talker and they were like oh yeah this is three negates i do appreciate that there aren't more just visibly better cards than existing ones but i think what we've learned as a result of this twitter thread is that sp is like nine of these rolled into one see you next week First up, I still run my guy Boralode. Thank you, <laughs> sitting Congressman Maxwell Alejandro Frost. Ugh.